The video review will start in a few seconds, but if you're watching this on YouTube, remember if you have a question, comment, or suggestion for me, you can post it on 3dgameman.com and the link is provided below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds from 3dgameman.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the EVGA 600B Bronze Power Supply. A great looking box that has pictures as well as features and specifications about the product. Now let me open it up and let's see what's inside. Included is a user's manual. Four black screws, power cord, and the power supply, which is in this bubble wrap bag. Currently, there are two power supplies in the EVGA bronze line, the 500B and the 600B. These are intended to be more affordable, low wattage power supply options over the more expensive, high wattage power supplies from EVGA. Now, I'll be looking at the 600B, which is the 600 watt model today. Now, how is this wattage determined? Well, to understand this, you need to know what rails are. And rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. Now in this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 130 watts and the 12 volt is 588 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. Now the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards etc. It's also important to know the peak amps on each rail. Well the plus 3.3 volt rail is 24 amps and the plus 5 volt is 20 amps. This power supply comes with a single plus 12 volt rail which is 49 amps. A power supply is one of the most important parts of your computer system so do not cheap out on a power supply. Get one that's brand name and firstly, one that's going to really have enough wattage for your computer system. So you need to figure out that. And generally speaking, a medium to high end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. And that for the most part would encompass most people. So this power supply will be perfect for that. For a hardcore system though, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card set up with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficiency at typical load and the efficiency of this power supply is 85% at typical load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC or active power factor correction assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD Plus, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD Crossfire, and many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. And this power supply meets the 80 plus bronze certification. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. Now this power supply doesn't use Japanese capacitors, but that doesn't mean that the power supply is going to fail or it's going to have any problems. And to be honest, it's not surprising considering that it's a low wattage, low cost power supply option. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside of the case. Also, it's important to get a power supply with an excellent warranty. And this power supply comes with a three year warranty. It comes with a black paint finish and the housing is steel. They include a very quiet 120 millimeter fan. So this fan and the lots of ventilation here means that the power supply should remain cool in just about any environment. Also, I love this fancy fan grill that they have. It is recessed and their logo is in the middle. Note that they have 600 stamped here at the top. At the back here, they've got the power switch and the power cord connection. To keep costs down, this power supply is not modular. Now, personally, I prefer modular power supplies, but in this range, it really doesn't matter a whole lot because first of all, you don't have a lot of 
leads to start with. Higher wattage power supplies that are not modular can be a real problem because they have a ton of leads, they look bad, and they really hinder airflow. All of the leads are sleeved, quite a good job. It looks good and it should last a while. As well, they've got this plastic grommet here at the back and this is to prevent the cables from chafing. Finally, try and have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan. It is super quiet. Power supplies in this wattage range are very popular because they are affordable and to be honest, this is enough wattage for most people even gamers. Now, if you're going hardcore or extreme, of course, you're going to need a higher wattage power supply. But I think this power supply is going to be very popular. It looks great. Really good, clean power. It's 80 plus bronze certified as well from a very reputable, trustworthy company, EVGA. Overall, this is a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. I hope you enjoyed this video review and please note that pricing for this product is available on the 3D Game Man video review page.